Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is David Novak. Today I am going to do the Don't You Forget About Me tag. Uh, this was created by uh, Jolene at Bookworm Adventure Girl and it consists of four prompts. Uh, you can decide however many books you want to select for each prompt. And I have decided to follow Jolene's example in her video and select three for each prompt. There are four prompts. I was tagged by Joshua Krebo. Thank you, Joshua, for tagging me. And I decided not only will I choose three books for each prompt, but I decided to choose one from each genre, meaning first I will have a nonfiction book, then I will have a poetry book, and then I will have a fiction book or a novel. I believe those are the three genres that exist. Is there anything else? Mm. So, Incidentally, I will link uh, Jolene's and Joshua's videos in the description box. I should further add that Jolene's original tag was inspired from a video that Brian at Bookish did about five books that he simply can't remember. And I will put a link to that also in the description box. I should say when it comes to that, that for me, the general rule is I don't remember. Uh, I, that's been a handicap I have borne with since I was very young, uh, but I will do the best I can. Now I've just got my piles confused here. Number one is clean slates, books you've read that you don't remember anything about. So I will start with this uh, biography of George Washington Williams by John Hope Franklin. Uh, John Hope Franklin is a very interesting historian, or was, I should say. And I read this as part of my research toward a Congo project that I intended to do. And I just don't remember anything more about the man. I, I know that he traveled to the Congo. Uh, I, I believe he went under capacity of journalist. He may well have met with King Leopold himself. I am just not sure. Um, and he died pretty young. Uh, but I don't remember anything more. If I ever restart that project, I will have to reread it. This is a picture of the author. Well, you know, I said poetry for my second book, books that I don't remember anything about. Well, this is not poetry. This is a poet. Uh, I've read this, uh, Rilke, Letters to a Young Poet. This edition was gifted to me by a very dear friend. I didn't like the book very much, but I just can't remember it. I think I have even read it twice. I have this edition as well. I, I just don't remember it. I, I mean, I vaguely remember that there were like letters, but that, that's, that's all I remember. And number three, I mean, my third, my third choice for that is a, a work of fiction. And this is a book you, here talked about on booktube all the time and i read this when i was very young and not this edition i believe but i just don't remember it i think i was too young for it honestly I, people read this and love it earlier this year i read tolstoy's war and peace and loved it but i think i was just too young i i had to have been a teenager when i read it prompt number two genie's lamp books you wish you could forget. Now, 
I don't, as a rule, wish I could forget anything. So let me make that caveat clear. Um, generally speaking, if I wish to forget something, I probably will. Uh, books that I've read that I don't like and have gotten rid of, I've probably forgotten. Uh, to start with my nonfiction book, I've shown this one before, The Caning of Charles Sumner. Let's, let's give you a title page here by, by this guy. And it was just a, a god-awful work. It purports to be a work of history, but as, as I've mentioned in another video, it says that, that uh, Charles Sumner was an American politician, senator, I believe, and on the Senate floor, he, he had the uh, nasty habit of talking about slavery on occasion. And uh, this book lets you know that it was just so insufferable that he would talk about slavery that he had to nearly be murdered on the Senate floor. So, my second book in that, for that uh, Genie's Lamp prompt, books you wish you could forget, let's go with Don Juan. Um, I'm, I don't know, it's, uh, you know, John Keats has a quote, which I've referred to somewhere else about Byron. Lord, Lord, Lord Byron writes what he sees. I write what I imagine. Mine is the harder task. Who wants to read a poem this long that's lacking in imagination? Not me. Well, I'm being a little hard on, on Byron, to be honest. Um, it's, it's kind of a, a witty thing, and the, the wit kind of grows tiresome. So I will, I will fault him for that. I won't fault him for the uh, lack of imagination. I'll leave that to Mr. John Keats, five feet high or five feet tall, whatever that was. And then the last one, the uh, novel that I wish I could forget. And it, it, as I said, I don't really wish I could forget anything. And that is this one, uh, The Price of Salt by Patricia Highsmith. I read it a year or two ago. And it was, uh, it was really something of a hodgepodge. Every other page, um, the main characters were lighting up a cigarette uh, or sending for alcohol or go mixing, mixing cocktails. Um, I, think, I think something of that uh, was de rigueur in novels of the time. I don't recall if Giovanni's Room was like that, but that was the period that it came from. And I, I didn't, I wish people would leave their smoking and their drinking out of it. Number three, the prompt number three is forgotten gems, books that you think need more love. And I'm going to, in this case, go not with a book per se, but an author, Lewis Mumford. Um, this actually is the one book of his that I have not read. Um, you can see what good shape it's in. Uh, I think I've pretty much read mostly everything else by him and remember it by, by littles. Uh, he was important to me at one time, and I should revisit him to exactly figure out why he was important to me at the time. I, I, I just wish people would talk about Mumford and his ideas a little bit more. Uh, I, I believe he was a uh, well-known womanizer, and, and that still gets talked about. But I, I'd like to, I, w I wish he was just more part of the general currency of conversation on Booktube and other places. Now, a uh, forgotten gem that I think needs more love is the poems of Stephen Crane, a really marvelous poet. I mean, not, not everything that he wrote is, is of equal value, but all of his poetry merits the reading. Uh, he, he did do some novels, and I think they're of middling quality. 
but his poetry is really top-notch when it comes to that. And then uh, the fictional work that I think needs more love, I will go with uh, a novel by Samuel Beckett, The Lost Ones. You hear people talking about Beckett here and there, but I've never heard anybody mention this one either. It's just a really marvelous story. And it says story. It's, it's really more of a novella, I guess, or just a story even, because in my edition, this is 63 pages, but the, uh, the, the font is quite large, so you can see that. But it's, it's just a really, really wonderful story. Number four, forget-me-nots. Books you will always remember. And again, when I say always remember, I don't always remember. But broadly speaking, I do in these cases. Um, so I will put up the question by Henry Alleg. I think you would probably say that. Henri. Henri Alleg. I don't know. The question, it's just an account of his uh, experience being tortured. Uh, he was, uh, I believe, a journalist or something in Algeria. And um, actually, the, the, the man who uh, was his torturer also has a book, uh, which I read a long time ago. I, I don't, unfortunately, have. And it's, uh, it's an interesting exploration into the topic. The Question by Henri Alleg. Poetry that I will always remember, and I will go with Dante, the Vita Nova. Nuova, I guess. Um, the New Life. Uh, I will always remember, um, uh, I bought this at a uh, bookstore uh, in Water Tower Place. Um, bookstores like that don't exist. I forget if, if it was Rizzoli Bookstore. I, I think I think it may have been a Rizzoli Bookstore. I don't know. Uh, Rizzoli, I think, is also a, a well-known publisher. And the young lady at the cashier's station when I when I purchased it said, "Oh, that is such a beautiful book." And I, I just, I, it's just one of those pieces that I won't forget. I read it, uh, of course, years after I first read the comedy by Dante. And then a book that I will always remember also. I really should take these price tags off. This is uh, Gogol, Dead Souls. Um, it's a, another book that I wish had more love sent its way on booktube. It's... Just a marvelous Russian classic. Of course, his overcoat was the story out of which everyone else came, according to Chekhov, I think it was. But Dead Souls is really a magnificent novel. It's uh, quite amusing in its way. Uh, it was the projected first part of three parts, and he destroyed the second part, and then of the pieces of the second part which survived the flames, opinion has been divided. Some people have said it was completely lacking in inspiration, and other people have said it was just as good as everything in the first part. I believe the Penguin Edition, at least this old Penguin Edition, reprinted what what was extant still of the second volume. Uh, and I read those and thought it was awful, so I would not bother with the that. That's just my take on it. But um, it, this is the David Magershack translation. It has been superseded at Penguin, so you might look for that. I don't know who the new translator is. So that is my take on the Don't You... Forget about me, tag. And in turn, I am going to tag a few people. Uh, I will tag Sean D. Stanfast. I will tag Kelly at Books I'm Not Reading. I will tag Jennifer at The Poetry Crone. I will tag 
Charlie at Grandpa's Book Club. I will tag Elizabeth at Bokens and Books, and I will tag Nathan at The Rambling Reviewer. Now, just because I am tagging you, I am not expecting you to do this tag if you don't care to. There is no obligation. Uh, I would like to hear what you have to say. Uh, you don't need to uh, tag me in it because I follow you and I will see it in my feed regardless. But if you, if you do decide to do these tags, I appreciate it. And so, uh, thank you, Jolene, for creating this tag, and again, Joshua, for tagging me. And thank you for stopping by my channel.